Hi guys, this is Manik. Welcome to the second part of our video series, Introduction to Neural Networks. In our last video, we discussed about the similarities between biological neuron and an artificial neuron. In this video, we will discuss two types of artificial neurons, that is perceptrons and sigmoidal neurons. So yeah, let's get started. So, perceptrons. Perceptrons were discovered by the scientist Frank Rosenblatt in 1950s. They are quite simple and can be used for any decision making model. So let's see how perceptrons work actually. So perceptrons can have n binary inputs that is all of the inputs must be either 0 or 1 and can have a single binary output that is the output will also be either 0 or 1 and each of the binary input is associated with the weight and the weight determines how important that particular input is for a given output. That is suppose that you want to predict if a person has diabetes or not. So it will take certain input features such as his weight, his height and what's his age. So that kind of features. Those are the input features here that is x1, x2, x3 and so on up to xn. Then how much important that each particular feature is to predict whether a person has diabetes or not. So that's what weight denotes. That is they denotes the importance of each feature. So how do we calculate the output for a perceptron? We calculate the weighted sum for all the inputs and then check if it is less than some threshold value which we set. So weighted sum means the sum of the product of each weight and its corresponding input. So here if we have x1, x2, x3 then the sum of w1, x1, w2, x2 and w3, x3 that is the weighted sum of the inputs. Then if it is less than certain threshold value which we set then you can see here the output could be considered as 0 or the output could be considered as 1 if the weighted sum is greater than that threshold value. So that's how perceptrons can help us to make any decision. Quite simple right? It's easy to understand. So let's do one thing. Let's change this equation. So you can see that wjxj is less than or equal to threshold. Let's get threshold to the left hand side of the equation and we'll get the equation as sigma wjxj minus threshold. Considering minus threshold as b, the equation which we will get is w dot x plus b is less than or equal to 0 where w dot x is the vector representation of sigma wjxj that is w is one vector and x is another vector. We multiply both of them. So we get w dot x as single value that is the sum of wjxj for all the values of j but there is very interesting and important question how do we actually get the value of this threshold that is b and we call it as bias term so how do we actually get the value of this bias term and the weight matrices because that's what is gonna decide what our output would be so that's where training of the model comes into picture so let me give you a glimpse of how this actually happens consider that you want to train a perceptron which can tell you if a person has diabetes or not given some inputs so what we do is we initialize all of the weights with some random values including the bias term and now when we train our model we pass each of the training examples to our perceptrons and check if it is giving correct output or not. If it doesn't give correct output we try to change the values of weights and the threshold value that is the bias term so that it can give us correct value. So that's how we actually train our model but there is one thing. If you try to change the values of weights while using perceptrons, the output will suddenly flip from 0 to 1. That is, if you try to change the weight, it won't go somewhere in between 0 and 1. It will be either 0 or 1. So let's see how could this be a problem actually in training the model. So sigmoidal neurons. Sigmoidal neurons are almost similar to perceptrons but there is only one difference that is the output. Here in perceptrons the output which we get is either 0 or 1 and we get that output by checking this w dot x plus b less than or equal to 0 or not. Here in perceptrons we don't get the output as 0 or 1. We get a value between 0 and 1. So let's see how we do that actually. There is this function called sigmoid function which help us in getting a value between 0 and 1 and let's see how will that help us in training the model. So sigmoid function is defined as 1 by 1 plus e power minus z. Don't see the mathematical form of this equation because that is actually not important for us. The thing which is important for us is the shape of this curve. So this is sigmoid function. Now let me tell you how this partially works like perceptrons. So if you see here this value is almost minus phi and this value is almost phi. So if there is any value which is greater than phi, you will always get a value 1 that is similar to this part. If w dot x plus b is very much less than 0, then you will always get a value 0. And w dot x plus b, if that is very much greater than 0, you will always get a value 1. So that's what happens here. If the value w dot x plus b, this value, if it is less than minus phi, much less than minus phi, you will always get a value 0. But whereas if your w dot x plus b is very much positive, you will always get a value 1. But the difference is here, if w dot x plus b is just a bit less than 0, you will always get 0. 
and if w dot x plus b is just a little bit greater than zero, you will always get one in perceptrons. But in sigmoid neurons, that is not the case actually. If the value is a little bit greater than zero, you will never get one. And if the value is little bit less than zero, you will never get zero. So that is the most important thing for us. Now, how does this help us? You can see that when we train our model, that is by changing the values of weights and bias terms, our output will not suddenly flip from zero to one or one to zero. It will change by a little bit. That is, we have now more freedom to make a model which will work in the manner we want. It will not suddenly flip from zero to one. Consider that you have a present input and now you are changing the values of weights and the bias terms so that your perceptron model can classify it correctly. But maybe because of that, your previous inputs for which you tried to change the values of weights and bias terms, now their output will completely flip from 1 to 0. That might be a case there in perceptrons. But that is not the case in sigmoid neurons. So if you try to change the values of weights and bias terms for present input so that you can get correct output for this present input, the outputs of the previous inputs will not change directly. They will change only by a little bit. So that's how sigmoid neurons help us in training the model. That is, if we change the value of weights and bias by a small value, our output will also change by a small value but not drastically. So you can see that this sigmoid function is actually a smooth version of step function because if you try to replace this sigmoid function with step function in our sigmoid neurons, you will get perceptrons. So you can observe it here, like if the input is even little bit less than zero, you will always get the output as zero. And if the input is even little bit greater than zero, you will always get the output as one. Whereas this is not the case here in sigmoid neurons. It changes slowly. So sigmoid function is always gives us a value between zero and one and it is called as activation function. But is there any other use of sigmoid function? Yes, there are many uses of sigmoid function and one of them, the most important thing, the heart of neural networks is activation functions. Because because neural networks are universal function approximators. They can approximate any non-linear function. But how do they do that? They do this by using this activation function. That is for a small change in the input. There will be only small change in the output. So because of that, they can map to any non-linear data. It's not important anymore that the data must be in linear form. It can be in any non-linear form and the neural network can adjust itself so that it can even map to a non-linear data. So that's how sigmoid functions or activation functions comes into picture. We have other activation, we have other activation functions also, such as tan h, relu, leaky relu, because there are even disadvantages of sigmoid function also. So we'll discuss that in the next video. So yeah, let's see a complete neural network which can be used for our example that is to classify handwritten digits. So the data set which we are gonna use in this series will be MNIST data set. So if you don't know about what MNIST data set is, it is actually a collection of images of handwritten digits and each of them is 28 by 28 pixels and all of them are black and white. That is just one color channel is there. So if you try to stretch out an image from that data set, you will get a column vector of 784 pixels. So considering each of them is input, we can pass that to the neural network and this is the hidden layer through which mathematics goes on about which we are going to discuss in the next video and then output from those hidden layers is passed to the output layer which determines the probability of the image to be among any one of them like it determines what is the probability of the image to be zero and what is the probability of the image to be one so like that whichever is maximum that we output as our correct output so that's how neural networks work actually but there is a lot of stuff which goes on inside hidden layers that is the simple mathematics actually but we'll discuss about that in the next video so yeah guys, I hope you liked the video. Please do share and subscribe to this channel who haven't subscribed till now. And yeah, stay connected with me. Thanks for watching.